Hello. So in the previous sections, we saw the emergence of band structure through analytical expressions and through numerical experiments. Uh, now I'm going to go summarize some of the numerical approaches uh, that we executed and give you a couple more uh, strategies for numerical work. All right. So um, we'll talk about the analytical segmentation and the transfer matrix method and then how you discretize Schrodinger's equation uh, for numerical expressions. So, in the previous segments, we had talked about uh, five steps for closed systems, uh, where you uh, solve the, the wave equation, Schrodinger's equation. You need to have boundary conditions, you can get the coefficients, and you need to uh, normalize the wave function to one if you want to get the last coefficient in your system. Um, in the first segment here, uh, uh, I also showed the transfer matrix method that can be generalized really to any structure um, where you look at transmission uh, through a object. Um, it is very appealing and it works well for simple structures like these where you have flat bands, not too many barriers, uh, not too thick of barriers, etc. That method uh, really doesn't work all that well for realistically large devices. You need to use other methods, and I invite you to look at um, a, a course I have on NanoHub that explains that in more detail. Uh, but you use this to, to uh, calculate uh, single and double barriers uh, quite well, and you can do this analytically. Now, if I'm after a numerical solution of the Schrodinger equation, um, I can do that as well and discretize Schrodinger's equation uh, in space. Uh, we have done analytical expansions so far where we've taken an ansatz uh, to a solution and determined its coefficients. Uh, you can do it in a different way uh, as well where you don't just assume uh, these coefficients like decay coefficients alpha and I can the previous segment we call it gamma. Uh, you have uh, in propagating constants k, where you start with an ansatz of a solution, but you really uh, do it completely uh, numerical. So if you want to do that, you would define a grid in in your space. Uh, you typically give it a constant uh, lattice constant. Here we chose the uh, length a, and uh, you can discretize the potential that you would like to resolve. And uh, uh, if you look at further research that my group and many other groups have done, this uh, resembles somewhat of a tight binding methodology. And I would argue that the natural lattice constant that you should be using is actually the lattice constant or the atomic uh, separation in, in your crystal. So that's the natural resolution and that's the research my group pursues where we really represent uh, devices in an atomistic sense. Here we do this with a single uh, S-like orbital. You'll see how that emerges uh, in a simple discretization of an effective mass equation. All right, so what I'm after in this calculation might be a wave function in the system and I would then also resolve that uh, in this in this discretized form. All right, so if I want to solve Schrodinger's equation like this, I have to form a second differential. And uh, let's find that one definition of such a, sec a second order differential on a uh, one dimensional lattice of separation A. So uh, one way to do that is to derive it through an expansion where you represent the wave function uh, uh, at the next lattice side over x0 plus a as an expansion of the wave function at the original side x0 and you expand it uh, with a Taylor expansion like like so looking at the first, second, etc. Um, uh, differentials. Uh, if I now look at uh, the differential uh, 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 the wave function value on the left, one lattice uh, constant to the left, I would uh, get uh, a similar expansion, but I get um, odd coefficients on the odd um, expansion coefficients. And what I can do now is a, a trick. I can add these uh, two expressions uh, on the left and the right of the um, uh, of these two equations up here. 
And so I, I have, I add these two. So that's this guy. And I bring uh, the addition of this guy and this guy over to the left and I get this guy here. And what I find is that these linear terms drop away with a plus and a minus sign and I get two coefficients um, of a, a square half so I just end up with a square d2 psi dx at, at the lattice uh, point I'm interested in. So I transform that over here that I basically get the second order differential at any lattice site i by looking at uh, the lattice side to the left, lattice side to the right, and uh, at the lattice side I, uh, where I am. And this is the typical discretization of a second order differential in uh, a one dimensional vector space by A. So we can represent this uh, um, uh, Schrodinger equation now with uh, a matrix like this. Uh, as represented on the top left, where you have a coefficient that is uh, t0 h bar square over 2m0 over a square on this lattice. And we uh, represent the uh, second order differential here in this form. And what we have for the equation above is minus t0 psi on the left plus t0 plus a potential on the side we're interested in on side i, and I'm looking right on psi i plus 1. So what that looks like is a system with n unknowns, and it turns into a, a triangular matrix. We assume typically <clears throat> closed system boundary conditions like this. This can be expanded to open system, but here in this uh, representation we're just going to look at closed systems. So <clears throat> let's look at this in a matrix form. If we look at any other site um, but the beginning and the end site, so i equals 2 through n minus 1, we have an expression that looks like this on the top. If we look at the first site, we can see that the coefficient at, uh, on the far left uh, drops to 0. If we look at the last site, the coefficient on the far right drops to 0. And you end up with a tri diagonal matrix. So you have coefficients on the diagonal. They look like this. And what you have here is the potential on each side entering. And then you have hopping coefficients that connect the neighboring side like this. Okay? So you end up with a tridiagonal matrix that's very compact, very nicely solvable. Um, in a simple way, you can just um, define it as a square matrix, but there's very nice methodologies to, to solve this kind of system also for um, in a tridiagonal form and save memory and, and be more efficient than making it truly just a simple matrix. All right, so you, you can represent the system Hamiltonian psi uh, h psi equals e psi and turn this into an eigenvalue problem that you can solve in MATLAB. And uh, there's non-hop tools that can also do this for you. And uh, if you want to know more about um, how to solve this for open systems and find solutions that are faster or numerically more efficient, I invite you to look at the course I have on non-hop quantum mechanics and, and atoms to uh, realistic devices. So here's the reference to that. Um, that is particularly interesting if you have uh, uh, devices that have open boundary conditions like this where electrons are really leaking out because the closed system solution is just plain out wrong. So with that, that concludes section number six. Um, I hope you've seen in an intuitive way how this uh, thing called band structure emerges. Uh, and you do that through electron tunneling, through multiple barriers. Uh, we've seen how electrons can tunnel perfectly well uh, under a barrier and how bands emerge and inside a band you almost have perfect transmission uh, where electrons can move completely freely uh, through a structure which classically would be forbidden. Thank you very much.